20 degrees outside and I'm here at the marina first thing in the morning. Yet again, plans have changed. Um, this time for a drastically different reason. On Christmas Day, a little bit of tragedy struck. Um, so Hayden, if you remember our friend who bought the Christian 303, got a phone call from Dave at Mattapoisit, letting him know that his boat, Swan Song, had washed up on the rocks in New Bedford. So at some point on Christmas Day, after there was a storm, gusts up to 50 knots, the mooring ball that Hayden was on broke and the wind was blowing from the south, so pushed the boat north towards the rocks. Um, there is damage to Hayden's boat. Um, we don't know the extent of it at this point. Um, we know that there is some damage, at least to the bottom, potentially the skeg, the tow rail, and God only knows what else. So, I'm down here today because Hayden is hauling out his boat and it is going to be stored for the rest of winter. And the new plan is Hayden will be actually sailing with us on Ixion down to the Keys. So, I'm down going to his boat now to check it out. Right now, I'm just kind of tidying things up as best I can. It's not going to get jostled probably any more than it did already. No, it's calm. And when they haul it out, they'll haul it out straight up and then they'll stick it on directly onto the boat. So, so it's it might just those shake. Slow turns and it might shake a little bit, but mm. not enough to be an issue. And then you'll have ample time to take stuff out. Well, I've picked up enough electrical connectors out of the bilge water to not want to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> How are you feeling? I'm almost feeling like it's a blessing in disguise. Actually, I, I feel like I could be unknowingly saving my life <laughs> by, you know, I don't know. I mean, just having, just doing such a big journey on a boat that I, I have not felt was ready mm -hmm. has been kind of, you know, in the back of my mind. and. You know, I, I wasn't willing to make the choice to not go. Yeah. So this happening has sort of made the choice for me and I'm not unhappy about it. Well, it gives you the chance to get comfortable with sailing and everything and spend the time and then come back in the heat and be able to fix everything and then start all over again with comfort knowing you can do it all and that everything's fixed properly. Yeah. An inside joke with that maritime law. So Hayden seems to have like a gold mine of things in his boat that we're going to ransack and take with us. <laughs> we might. We might. So I we mean, you've got, got, got a bilge here. There's you've got so bilge. much stuff. Well, we have we have an extra one, but there's like so much stuff in here. You should see the, the aft compartments underneath here. Completely full of canned food. It's probably two, month, two months worth of food for a single person there. I guess we need to go it's grocery shopping. It's a little shopping. hard to get to though. You'll have to see it, um, oh, gotta open it up. when we get to the house. Because Peter's coming down, we're gonna, because mm -hmm. it's his food. Although I'm gonna ask him if I can just maybe pay for the food next trip. Because <laughs> it's already here, you know, see, here's some here. Dry milk, you know, some good stuff. That the uh, throttle? Yeah. I think I picked up that memory card. I don't know why it's so stuck. <laughs> I 
hard to see, but there is a spot like right here on the bottom. The stretch stuff. We'll be able to see it better once it's out of the water. We can see the full bit of damage. Here you go. See you later. Safe travels. Thanks. Okay, so Hayden is... Let me take this mask off. So Hayden is on his way now. He's leaving now. You can probably see him behind me. To head to get his boat hauled out. I'm going to meet him over there. But first, I'm going to go over to the rocks where he crashed on he said you can still see blue paint all over the rocks so we're gonna go check that out before we leave also my hands are freaking frozen because in my rush this morning to leave I did not grab gloves which was stupid of me because it's like 30 degrees now <sighs> almost there guys almost there Florida I hear you calling my name Sirens call, except I'm not washing up on the rocks. Okay, here we go. So, here. You see the pads? I do. Okay, he said go really slow. Okay, <laughs> so that's kind of the initial look at the bottom um, now that it's been pulled out. Obviously, we need to kind of take a more extensive look at it. It looks like a portion of the rudder post is actually broken. So um, right now, Hayden is um, undoing all the standing rigging, taking the shrouds, forcing the backstay off. Um, and then when they'll unstep the mast, and after that, we'll then move it to the house and then from there we'll kind of dig in a little bit to see what kind of damage we can see just visually and not only that but we'll kind of talk about what went wrong what could have been done better etc 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 so let's get back to Hayden taking all of his rigging off
coming down. Let's go one side or the other, Andrew. All right. I'm gonna pick the life wrap side. Lazy Jack. I said it was a loose Lazy Jack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, your mask is now down. to be ground out. Well, actually, I gotta say, I was I was expecting worse. It's pretty crappy, but I thought there was gonna be a lot more of this, like all over. Yeah. So uh, overall, I'm actually kind of happy. If, if one can be happy about something like this, the rudder looks the worst. Well, you'll get experienced fiberglass now. That's a lie. Change the name, it's cursed. The name is changing before it ever goes in the water again, I promise you. That is a solemn promise. It's a cursed name. Swan Song, it's like you're asking to die. It already had its last sale. <laughs> Eight years ago. Swan Song had its last song. <laughs> okay, so all is done here. Now we are gonna take Hayden back to his car um, over at Pope's Island, the marina, and then head back to the house for them to show up. And then I need to eat because I'm freaking starving. I'm not doing anything. Were you doing stuff behind me? No. So, maybe. over Hayden's boat now that it was pulled out of the water and uh, the damage at least upon initial visual inspection the damage isn't too bad so if this is his nifty little boat this is the bow this is the stern so he's got a bunch of damage here on the hull deck joint on the port side 
So presumably, after snapping off the mooring, his boat spun around, hit something, and then spun to shore. It grounded on its star on the starboard side. So a bunch of damage on the hull deck joint, about four feet long, which is substantial. So that's going to have to get rebuilt. Um, a lot of damage on the rudder skeg and the bottom of the keel. But it looks more like a mostly fairing job. Um, the hull has some some major scraping no hull breaches no hull breaches so like that's really lucky but there was a bunch of scraping and um i was knocking around a little bit looking for delamination and there may be a little bit but i it was really like quick checks so we'll definitely have to suss out more thoroughly in the spring and summer and and really know for sure the big thing that that we do still need to check and uh i need to thank dave at matapos boatyard for reminding me is that we will definitely have to check all the stringers on the keel or all the stringers in the boat um if you don't know stringers are essentially beams that cross the the cabin sole and give support and rigidity to the um the keel and the hull at hull at large so if there's cracks you might get a lot of hull flexing and you know further damage down the road so we really need to make sure the stringers are good to go and uh that's going to be a fairly uh big job if they're cracked essentially what happened was that the mooring chain broke um hayden had been on this mooring for about three weeks and it had survived several significant gales uh that blew through new bedford here but on christmas day this particular gale the chain just gave way and um yeah, it gave way. So there was nothing that Hayden could have could have really done to prevent it, aside from like inspecting the entire mooring chain as a whole. Uh, that's about the only thing that he he could have possibly done. But that also would have involved you know diving on the chain and, and whatnot. I think. So, uh, yeah, it was really, really unfortunate, but I'll also admit that, you know, what, after talking to Hayden, both, both he and I feel like it's kind of a blessing in disguise. Um, Hayden wasn't feeling completely ready to, to captain his boat so far from, from land. And uh, quite frankly, I was starting to feel apprehensive about basically captaining two boats, one of which I would be on. Well, that is it for this week. Our crew of two is officially a crew of three now, at least for this winter. It's been a crazy, crazy few days, but Sometimes things just happen. You live and you learn and you move on. So thank you all for watching this week. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't already. Comment below and give us a thumbs up. Also hit the notification bell so you get notified when we have a new episode out. And if you want to additionally support us, you can also go to our Patreon. The link for that is down below. And come back next week so you can see why Ixion has freaking blown its guts all up inside and why it is a complete cluster bleep in here yes i bleeped myself cluster bleep just enjoy that self bleeping until next week goodbye everyone until then 
the gentleman.